welcome along to day four of our themed week here on Property Tribes. It's property topics going head to head. It's powered by our friends and colleagues at Nova Financial. And joining me all this week is Nova MD, Paul Mahoney. Uh, and Paul, um, before we get going with today's topic, I thought we could just recap on what the week's all about. Because when you and I were kind of formulating this week, we wanted to really highlight how um, powerful and positive it is to have robust debate because it really does help tease out the issues um, and you know when certainly when you're starting out you're you may not be sure of how you feel about certain issues and um, and i think one of the really powerful things about this is that you can have a really full-on debate and you might just pick out one golden nugget from that debate but it could change a lot of things very positively for you. Yeah, look, I, I completely agree. I think you know, healthy and friendly debate is always a good thing. And um, you, you, know, you need to kind of pick what, what you feel most comfortable with. And maybe you might take certain points from both sides of the argument. Mm. Um, aside from that, I think it's a bit boring when people always agree with each other. <laughs> things. So hopefully this is slightly more entertaining and slightly more thought provoking. I agree. I think one thing that we all have to fight against is cognitive bias um, and I know you know speaking for myself I struggle with that sometimes I have very strong opinions and views on on things that have been formed over a long period of time you can get kind of stuck in your way stuck in a rut in your thinking and I think one thing about property is that it is particularly since post-covid lockdown it's changing it's it's very fluid it's fast uh, there's a lot of velocity of change and I think during these kind of times it's even more important that you're open-minded and willing to kind of try on new ideas and new 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 thought processes and ways of thinking. Absolutely you know that there's there is an awful lot that has changed in the UK property market over the past five years and and therefore a strategy that worked five years ago may not work at all today uh, and strategies that didn't work then may work fantastically well today. So, you know, I agree with you on the cognitive bias is that, you know, if people are too stuck in their ways, they can end up becoming outdated and, and, and no longer, you know, making their property strategy work for them. So yeah. being open-minded, listening to new ideas, listening to the logic that supports those ideas, I think is a sensible thing to be doing. And there's so much um, discussion, debate, free content out there on uh, social media, obviously Property Tribes is a perfect example of where you can come to debate and learn and grow. Um, but you yourself at Nova, you have a lot of educational resources as well, don't you? Yeah, we've got an awful lot of education, you know, free educational resources on our website and obviously work with people on a daily basis to help them determine what's going to work best for them. Yeah, and I think we've said all along throughout this week that property is not a case of one size fits all anyway. So everything that you need to think about in property, you need to put that in the context of your own financial position, your own attitude to risk, how much time you have to dedicate to it, and most importantly, what your own personal goals are, because that they're really what will determine your personal way forwards. Yeah. No, I completely agree. You know, everyone's situation is different. Different things work better for different people. Um, and I think that is one of, that's one of the hard things to do on your own, especially, well, when you're starting out, it's hard. When you've got experience, I think it's just as hard because as we've just said, you, you've got experience with what, what has worked for you and therefore you might be less open to new things that could work for you. So I think it's an ongoing process. No, it definitely is. Now, um, today we are going to talk about uh, the suburbs versus the city. I'm in the blue corner with the uh, suburbs and you are going to speak on behalf of investing in city centres. Um, now, now, my kind of view, kind of a little bit goes back to our debate about houses versus flats. Um, mm -hmm. I am a big advocate of two and three bedroomed houses in good streets with good proximity to transport links, um, good leisure amenities, uh, within a good school catchment area, 
Uh, and I think very importantly, si since COVID-19, uh, with a, a good garden or outdoor space in the vicinity, um, those are always my kind of preference um, because they attract families and families tend to put, or certainly most families that I deal with, want to put down roots and certainly know uh, that they're going to be staying in that property to put their child through the local school. So my feeling is that those properties in the suburbs tend to attract a tenant that's going to stay for a long time um, and who just doesn't want to be right in the city centre, wants to have a certain quality of life um, you know with the, the benefits of the city but also being a little bit out in in the suburbs so that's really my main reason for choosing to represent the suburbs on this debate we tend to have more of a preference for city centers or very close surrounding sort of um, peripheries of the city center um, the main reason for that preference especially when we can get properties at the right price because, you know, I assume some people will listen to this talk from London and think, well, how in the world am I ever going to buy in central London? I wouldn't encourage you to. Um, but again, there are other places in the UK aside from London and places, for example, like Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, you can buy in the city centre at a reasonable price or at least the very close surrounding areas. And the reason we like those areas is that's where, that, that's where we find the focal point for depth in things such as strong tenant demand, population growth, a broad range of industries and, and, and therefore providing a very broad range of employment, facilities, amenities and infrastructure. All of those things tend to be at their highest in the city centre. Mm -hmm. And the further you go, the more they tend to thin. Mm -hmm. um, the further you go, more, the, the higher vacancy rates tend to rise as well. And, the, and, the, and the, therefore... The, the larger times between tenants. So yes, although you may retain the tenant for longer, and you probably will, um, we found that generally the turnover time for tenants with centrally located apartments tends to be two to three years, probably sort of two and a half years or thereabouts, whereas with families it's probably much longer. But the time between tenants is a matter of days. Mm -hmm. And therefore, there will be some cost in finding the new tenant, obviously, but you replace them quite quickly. Um, the type of tenant, um, you know, some people, I, I've been crucified for this in the past um, in that I'm not in property to provide social benefit. I'm in property to make money. And that's the stark reality. I'm very honest about that. And that's our approach. You know, I think people who have money and, and I think I might, might maybe I'm in that status should contribute. I, I can strongly contribute to charity. There's a chapter in my book about that. I'm a, I'm a big advocate of that. But I think you should separate making money to giving back because it's better to make it first and then give it back than to try to give back while making it in my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. And therefore I'm generally targeting young professionals who maybe don't need help, but I'm providing a house for them to live in a nice place for them to live in. They'll pay the rent. They'll look after the place. Now relating that to the current situation, I haven't had any issues with collecting rent throughout COVID-19 or lockdown because of the types of tenants I target. And I know that a lot of other te uh, landlords have. Okay, Paul, I think we, you know, we, we always say that we, we can't talk in, in blanket terms anywhere because there will be cities in the UK where, um, you know, flats in the centre do extremely well. And then there'll be other cities in the UK where, where maybe they don't do so well and, and vice versa. If we're talking about, you know, terraced houses in the suburbs, there might be some cities where the suburbs have a very high propensity of, uh, you know, ex-council stock and council estates, etc. So really, again, uh, as with anything to do with property, the devil is in the detail and people really need to understand the area, um, you know, from every angle to to understand where, where the best place to buy is. And it could well be, uh, you know, a city centre flat. Of course, it depends on your budget as well. But at the end of the day, um, we're only talking in very kind of broad terms because it ultimately boils down to the, the city itself um, and, you know, intense due diligence around it. Yeah, ab absolutely. And, and I think some people are, are do overlook that. Uh, in, in, you know, in fact, I think Liverpool is a great example of this mm -hmm. in that Liverpool city centre has very stark differences in demographics to some areas just a mile out. 
and, and, and you might go a mile north and it's still a nice area. You go a mile south and it's a terrible area. Uh, and therefore, without understanding that location, it's difficult to determine that. So I think that ties really well into your point. Um, again, kind of relating it back to the point uh, of what, why we, we like the city centres slightly further. Well, having more of those depth factors that I mentioned, in our view, creates more safety because mm -hmm. we've got more sustainability of demand. Um, what we've seen tends to happen in bad economic times, which we may be moving into now, um, is jobs tend to dry up in, in, in thinner job markets. Now, I think you might be talking about places that are relatively close to big cities, so maybe that's not so much of a problem. But areas that are a bit further from big cities, where they do have thin job markets, and obviously with the risk of job loss at the moment, um, I would be a bit concerned about having, you know, standard buy-to-lets or even short-term lets in those locations, because if the jobs do dry up, and quite often those smaller cities and towns are driven by one industry or even one company predominantly, that could be a big issue. Because if the jobs dry up, so too might the demand. No, I absolutely agree. And this is even more of an acute issue since, uh, you know, COVID-19 lockdown and, you know, all the fallout that's starting to appear uh, through that, you know, we're hearing of more and more and more job losses. Um, and in fact, on Property Tribes, we've got a thread that has uh, goes to a calculator which shows the number of jobs that are being lost through uh, the, the recession that's coming because of COVID-19. So I think, you know, due diligence has to be even more heightened. But, you know, Paul, you've been talking about big cities like Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool. They have very, very established property markets um, and you know let's let's just go to say a town that that I invest in which is Basingstoke um, obviously more of a, a kind of market town does have a lot of employers in the area a lot of industrial estates and retail parks those kind of things which is good when I started investing there there was a massive oversaturation of city centre flats but a shortage of family homes and I think one of the key ways to ascertain the, the best kind of area and, and property to invest in when you're doing your research is to pick up the phone to local estate and lettings agents and, and ask them where the demand is and you know the best streets, the best type of investment, because they have so much local knowledge that you, you can tap into. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, I think that's, that's a bit of a pitfall that some people make as well is selecting a really good location, but the wrong type of property. Yeah where the demand isn't necessarily skewed in favour of that type of property. For example, buying a flat in a family-oriented area or, or, or vice versa, buying a three-bedroom flat in an area where most people want to live in one or twos or a, a house in an area of people living in flats. So you need to make sure, and, and I agree, sometimes estate agents can be a good source of knowledge for those things. I think you need to be a little bit careful with the estate agents, in, in my experience, because people can walk into an estate agency job pretty quickly without much background knowledge. Now, sometimes estate agents are great experts in their locations, other times they're not. And sometimes the advice or guidance they give can be quite biased toward trying to sell you something. Um, so you need to be conscious of that. I think so. I, I, I do agree with that. And we do have a thread on Property Tribes about how to uh, find your way to a reputable agent and how to vet them um, to make sure that, that they are going to be uh, qualified uh, to assist you. Um, I think also um, one thing that, that, that people should do is, is walk the streets of any area that they're thinking of investing in, um, because you know, it can change at different times of the day. You can see if there's like a massive, uh, you know, traffic blockage when kids are going to school during the rush hour or, you know, particularly I, when I've had flats in, in city centres, I've always asked Nick to drop me off at the, the tube station in London at night uh, when I'm assessing a, an investment and I've walked from the tube station to the flat that I'm thinking of investing in because I want to see as a female if I feel confident walking alone at night in that area and I think you know these are all the little things you can do 
put yourself in the shoes of your potential tenant uh, and see because if a female fe felt you know nervous about walking home at night they, they probably wouldn't want to rent your flat so that would cut down the number of uh, tenants you had access to so again you know actual a mix of due diligence talking to agents doing your research online you can ask on property tribes about local areas from local landlords but also you know walking those streets um, and getting a feel for what it's like at different times of the day and night well it's always a bit of a balancing act isn't it <laughs> <laughs> it's always a bit of a balancing act on that point um in the for example where i live in deptford not so yeah. long ago was not so nice of an area. Um, and I remember being here three or four years ago and thinking probably my wife wouldn't feel comfortable walking down these streets at night. Now it's changing really quickly. And it's probably one of the fastest growing areas for property prices in London. Um, so you, you kind of don't want to get in too early, but sometimes there's, there's some room for growth. Um, and that, that's not just this area, it's many areas kind of on the fringes of cities where you can see the gastro pubs and the cafes at the end of the street and therefore visualize, well, quite soon they're going to be here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that, that's a, a bit more art than science, I think, but mm -hmm. um, a bit of a balancing act between foreseeing growth and, you know, wanting desirability today. No, I think you've raised a very good point there to see some uh, evidence in the area that things are improving. You know, there's that up age old adage of you know look to see where starbucks are going because they do masses amount of due diligence and research to decide where they're gonna where they're gonna put their next coffee uh shops or you know waitrose where where they're going uh where you can see new retail parks going in with with shops of course a lot of this might have changed uh post covid19 because obviously um you know the high street is in decline now um, things are changing. It's very interesting times, isn't it, Paul? And everybody's going to have to keep well on their toes and up to date with what's happening to uh, make yeah. some, some good investments. Because as you say, what has worked before for some experienced people actually might not be, be such a good strategy going forwards. No, that's true. And I think the key points there, whether it be Starbucks, Waitrose, it's more about inward investment mm. into a location. That, that's what gives confidence that there has been smart money that, that has done their research on whether that's a good place to be investing. And that's, in our view, always a really good sign. If you can see shops like that popping up, you know, various you know, big organizations that have property teams that you know, don't spend their money willy nilly, um, that does give confidence. Mm. I think one final thing uh, to look also at uh, towns on the outskirts of big cities where there's new transport links and infrastructure going in that's going to shorten the commute time and also obviously money going into the area creating jobs um, through construction project projects and things like that so th there's still a lot of the, the kind of fundamentals that we can look to but we have to think with a kind of post covid19 lockdown mind now don't we yeah, we do. And just to clarify my point about we, us liking city centres, I think Ma the Manchester city centre is a really good example of the point I'm just trying to make, is four or five years ago, we were investing right in the centre of the city. And prices there have almost doubled over that time frame. They've grown substantially and really quickly. Therefore, we're not investing there anymore because we can't see that happening over the next five to 10 years. Uh, and therefore, we've moved a little bit out. We can sort of, there's a very distinct ripple effect in the Manchester city centre. And that's another good example of where you kind of need to change a little bit. You know, go back four or five years, our clients were paying 250 pounds a square foot for a property in the Manchester city centre. Now they're paying 450 pounds. And that's no longer in our view, a very good investment. So you need to be aware of those things of what's happened over the past few years, how it's progressing and therefore what makes a good investment for you. Absolutely. Well, uh, that's it for today's instalment. Um, we've got our fifth and final instalment tomorrow. Paul will be back with me then, uh, but we hope you've enjoyed today. And please do uh, you know, engage on the thread below this video, share your views, whether you prefer the suburbs 
or the city and how you think that's going to change post COVID-19 because there has been quite a few early trends to suggest that people are looking to move further out of the city but I think it's too early to say if that trend is going to you know continue to develop but certainly you know changes are afoot aren't they Paul and people yeah, need to make keep a quick on the of them. Um, I think we need to be very conscious of not listening too much to mainstream media because the amount of requests I've had for comment on that particular point and have said no I haven't experienced it at all journalists go fishing for these things mm -hmm. and they create their own stories you know this morning been you know, inundated with requests for comment on how is the eviction ban going to affect things because that's what they want to write about so you know there's a clear there's a clear reason for a trend for moving away from cities that's yet to be seen as to whether it actually materialized i'm sure some people have mm. but let's not, let's not take the media for gospel i think is an important tip I think so, Paul, and that actually brings it full circle back to what we said at the beginning, which is why debate uh, and discussion is so healthy because it doesn't have a media agenda or bias behind it. It's it's just people sharing their thoughts, just you know, sharing for the sake of sharing, not because they they're trying to achieve anything out of it. And I think you know we'll get a better understanding of a post. COVID-19 property market through such uh, sites as, as property tribes and other forums and Facebook groups where people are just discussing things with actual you know anecdotal evidence from the coalface so to speak rather than journalists who want to create this story about how people are flocking away from city centres and want to go to a lovely house in the suburbs with a big garden so I think you're absolutely right once again uh, it highlights the importance of uh, getting lots of different inputs and you know mulling it all over and processing it yourself and, and coming to your, your own conclusion absolutely Fantastic. Okay, well, that's it for today. Hope you've enjoyed it. And please jo join Paul and myself tomorrow for the final instalment of Property Topics going head to head. We will see you there.